Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time, it's the second part in my occasional series in which I'm doing projects with a Raspberry Pi Zero. Specifically, I'm going to be taking a Raspberry Pi Zero W and using it to make a networked surveillance camera. So, let's go and get started. Right, here we have our Raspberry Pi Zero W, which is the version of the Raspberry Pi Zero with onboard Wi-Fi, which we need to create a networked camera device. This said, you could use any model of Raspberry Pi for this project. So for example, you could use a Raspberry Pi 3A Plus like this, or you could use a Raspberry Pi 4. But uh, here I'm going to stick with the, uh, the Raspberry Pi Zero W, to which we now need to add a camera. And there are various options available, for example, we could use a standard Raspberry Pi camera, which I've used in uh, previous projects, but uh, this costs about £24 or $30. And so for this project, I thought I'd try out one of the smaller and cheaper cameras made specifically for the Pi Zero. So uh, what I've got here is the uh, Zero Cam from the Pi Hut, which they sell for uh, £15, and uh, which is a five megapixel resolution. Unfortunately, I can't find a US supplier for uh, this product, but lots of retailers sell very similar looking models, such as Adafruit with its Zero Spy camera for the Raspberry Pi Zero, which retails for $19.95. If we open up our uh, Zero Cam, it just slides out. The packaging is rather substantial here. We've got a little, little magnetic clasp on the case, but you'll see inside we've got a very small camera, which I think I removed by the magic of filmmaking. And uh, there we are, this is a very, very small camera indeed, and it's even got its control electronics integrated into its ribbon cable. And uh, to make it clear how small this camera really is, let's compare it to the standard size Raspberry Pi camera, which, as you can see, is a much bigger module. And it's also important to note here that these two cameras have got different sized ribbon cable connectors, as you can see. It's larger on the standard Raspberry Pi camera than on the Zero camera. And that is because the ribbon cable connector on a Raspberry Pi Zero is smaller than the one on a standard Raspberry Pi. Now, it is possible to use either of these cameras on any model of Raspberry Pi if you use an appropriate adaptive cable. Here, for example, is the adapter required to use a Pi Zero camera with another Pi, which has a larger ribbon cable connector. But the important thing I want to stress is you must make sure when you're getting a Raspberry Pi camera, you're going to have the right ribbon cable and potentially adapters to connect to the Pi you're using. Right, with all that clear, let's now connect uh, this camera to our uh, Raspberry Pi Zero, which requires us to very carefully pull out and raise the retaining bar on the end of the Pi Zero, push the ribbon cable in with the contact side down, and push the retainer bar back in. And there we are, we now have our camera connected to our Raspberry Pi Zero. Quite how I'm going to mount all this up, I'm not yet quite certain, but I do plan to use this uh, Pibo case. And uh, I know that once I've put the Pi Zero in this Pibo case, it's impossible to slot in the micro SD card. And so the next thing we need to do is to take a micro SD card, and uh, there one is uh, over there. That's the card we're going to use. It's a Sandisk High Endurance model, which did well in my recent SD card group test video. And so what we're now going to do is to get some software onto this card, and uh, we can then put everything together. Right, I've now put the micro SD card into a reader in my laptop, and we're going to install the software MotionIOS. This is an excellent Linux distribution, which turns a single board computer into a video surveillance system, and it's written by Kalin Crisson. And we can obtain the software from his GitHub pages here, as you can see, where, if you wish, you can make a donation to support its development. To download the software, we need to go down to a supported devices. Uh, there we are. And if we click on that, we will get to a page listing all the Singapore computers which you can get. Motion iOS, Raspberry Pi, of course, is towards the bottom because it begins with an R. The version we want here is this version there, which works for the original Pi and the Pi Zero and Zero W. But there are also versions you can see for the Pi 2, the Pi 3, and the Pi 4. But uh, I'll download the version for the Pi Zero W. There we are, click on that, and save to my Raspberry Pi Downloads folder. And uh, there we are, the image is now downloaded. 
And we now need to write it to the micro SD card. And to do that, I'm going to use a Belena etcher, which I've got to running down here and which you can obtain from belena.io forward slash etcher. But if you don't want to use etcher, I know some of you don't like etcher, you can always use Rufus or Win32 Disk Imager. But uh, whatever image you're going to use, you need to select your image. That's going to be what we downloaded here. Where's it gone? There we are, the uh, most recent version of Motion Eye OS. And then we'll put that there. We've already selected the micro SD card, but yes, that's the right one, always worth checking. And we'll now uh, flash the image to the micro SD card. And tell Windows it's fine to do it. Of course it is Windows. We'll now wait for the thing to complete. And uh, there we are, it has completed. And make sure you don't reformat any partitions again. Windows can't read, just click cancel on any of those. And uh, now we need to actually put some information onto the micro SD card in addition to the image, because we need to tell it the details of our Wi-Fi network so that Pi Zero can get online. And if we open up this PC, we should be able to see the card, but we can't see all of it. And I've discovered the best way to make things work is to take out your micro SD card, which I'll do now, and to uh, put it back in again like that. And uh, Windows will now come up with things it can't see. Don't worry about those, cancel, don't, whatever you do, reformat things that you don't need to reformat. And you can see here we've got a drive which uh, Windows can access, which is the first partition there. If we open that one up, you can see various files here on the micro SD card, including things like a boot code bin and a config text. And uh, what we now need to do is to create a new configuration file here. So I'll right click and do a new and uh, text document. And uh, we need to give it the name WPA underscore supplicant like that. And it's going to be not TXT, but a CONF for conf. So we've created our new uh, configuration file. Do we want to do that? Yes, we do. We know what we're doing. Now, we now need to open up that file. I'm going to use Notepad here. And I'll say a little bit about that in a second. But I'll open up Notepad. And we'll open up that configuration file. File and uh, open. And it's down there in what on D. We'll have to do show all files because it's not a TXT file, but it should appear now. There we are. And it should be there we are. Let's open it up. It will, of course, be empty. And we now need to put some information into this file. And we can get a lot of that by going back to the, uh, the web pages for Motion iOS and going to a page labeled Wi Fi pre configuration. So we'll do that. We'll get some more space on our screen like that. And if we scroll down here, these are very good instructions for doing this on all kinds of computers. But what I'm showing you here is a very, very simple version of it. But what we do need is to take this code here. So we'll take a copy of that code and do a Control C to copy it, take it back into Notepad and a Control V. And we've got that now sitting in our configuration file. Next, we need to change the country code here if we're not in the United States. I'm in the UK, for which the country code is confusingly GB. And I'll give you a list of country codes via a link in the video description. The next thing we need to do is to enter our SSID or service set identifier, the name of our network and our password. So for example, if your Wi-Fi network is called Skynet, you would put uh, INET in there. And if your password was say 12345, you put your password in there 12345. Now, of course, Skynet and 12345 aren't my actual uh, details. So I now put in the correct ones for my network. And uh, there they are, slightly longer password. And now we just need to uh, press a file and a save. And uh, everything should be uh, set up on the micro SD card. However, it's worth noting that if you read the pages here on the web about setting this thing up by the person who wrote all this, and of course they should know what they're doing, they actually tell you here you should be using not Notepad to write your file in Windows, your config file, but you should download and install Notepad++. And the reason for this is that for a very long time, 33 years to be exact, Notepad in Windows did not work properly with a Unix line feed. However, in May 2018, Notepad was updated to work properly with Unix line feeds, which means providing you're using an up-to-date version of Windows, which has been properly updated, using Notepad as we've done here to write the file should work with no problems at all. Anyway, with everything now set up, I'm going to close down Notepad, take out the micro SD card, and we can put it into our Raspberry Pi Zero. Right. With the tricky bit completed, I've now put the Pi in the case. As you can see, the camera is hanging out the end. I'm still not quite sure how to mount it, 
but as you might see on the back, there are some sticky pads. So I think I'm going to bring the camera around and stick it on the back of a unit like this. And uh, this is clearly hardly ideal. We've got to be careful not to knock this uh, ribbon cable here, but uh, this will work. And I'd point out I've removed a little piece of covering film from the end of the lens, and that this is a fixed focus camera, but you can change the focus if you wish by carefully uh, twiddling this thing on the front. Anyway, let's now put this uh, down like uh, that. And we need to go in search of some power. And I'm going to start with a micro USB adapter, although in the next section, I'll be using this USB power bank. Anyway, let's now connect in the power like uh, that. And uh, power is the only thing we have to connect because we're going to access the Pi wirelessly via a Wi-Fi. But if we want, we can also connect a mini HDMI lead, which will show us the output during the boot process. And this is one way of finding out the Pi's local IP address. Anyway, let's now press the power switch. And uh, here we go, the Pi is booting up. It's going through its initial uh, boot and setup process, formatting the data partition. And uh, if we just speed on through a bit of this setup process, there we are, Motion Eye is starting up, and um, it's found the network. We've got our network details correct, obviously. It's found its local IP address. It's been allocated at 192.168.15. So what we now need to do is to go to a web browser on another computer on the same network and to enter this IP address. And if you haven't got the address by plugging it a monitor to your Pi Zero, you could get it by looking into the control panels for your router, or you could run an IP scanner. So for example, down here, I've got Angry IP scanner on this machine. I like Angry IP scanner. We could scan through the local ranges about say 192.168.10 to 192168, say one, I don't know, 30 would probably be a good guess. And if we just start that off, uh, yes, there it is, it's found the, uh, Motion Eye device on 192.168.15, the world is uh, with us. And uh, if you don't find it in that address range, let's just close that down. If you scan from something like 192.168.00 to 192.168.1255, you should find local devices in that range. Anyway, let's go back to the web browser with our IP address and uh, press enter. And all oh, this looks good. Look, we've got a uh, Motion Eye is running and we need to put in a username. We'll do admin for which there isn't a password, you just press enter, you should be straight in. You can, of course, change that if you're not trusting everyone else who's using your network. Oh, and we've got a picture. That's good, isn't it? It's looking at the camera, looking at it. And let's just select that camera and maybe uh, rotate it around, because clearly we should have got the board the other way around, but I'm not going to rotate things right now because of all the wires connected in. You can see we've got a little light on the thing as well. Where are we? Down here, anyway, there is... Uh, things to rotate. Let's rotate 90 degrees and apply that. Hopefully that will bring us round the right way around. Is that going to work? Look a bit like a smartphone, won't it? But never mind. Um, there we are. That's, yes, that's working. So we've got, we've got the camera working. So uh, what I think I'm now going to do actually is to close this down. I'll go back to the menu here. There's all sorts of fantastic options here. This really is great software, Motion iOS. But what I'm going to do is to uh, play around a bit, put the camera somewhere a bit more interesting, and we'll try something more exciting. So, here I am back again, and the Raspberry Pi Zero is now being powered by the power bank I showed you earlier, which is a 3000 milliamp hour power bank, and I'll put a graphic on the screen to tell you how long it'll power the Raspberry Pi Zero with the camera. Oh, and there's that information. Isn't that exciting? Anyway, the Pi Zero is now in my kitchen. And if we go to a web browser, here we are. We can see it's looking at my fridge. It's surveilling my fridge. We can keep a track of the fridge. And it should be able to record films of the fridge if motion occurs, if something needs a reporting back. And I've just click up here on the little movies thing there. You'll see there's no media. I'm just showing you that before we look at other things. So uh, let's now bring up the, uh, the menu here. And I've been trying out various settings, and to be honest, I think I found that a Raspberry Pi Zero is a little bit underpowered to be using a motion detection with a motion iOS, so I've had to keep the settings fairly low, but it does work. I've got a 64480 for the video resolution. The video is rotated 180 degrees because the camera's that way up, as it were. And then we've got down here video streaming settings. Everything here is fairly straightforward, and the defaults are really good. And here we've got movies being recorded to a length of 30 seconds being triggered by motion. 
and then down under the motion detection section, you'll see if it's detecting more than a 2% change in the image it's seeing. It's constantly looking at frames, comparing them to previous frames. If it sees a change, it'll trigger a motion detection signal and it'll record the video. And it's worth pointing out you can, if you wish here, set up notifications to, for example, send you an email when a motion is detected. You've got to enter account details and things for that, obviously, to send an email, but it can be done. Anyway, that's all the way it's uh, set up. So let's just uh, close that off there. And I'm now going to uh, race into my kitchen and we'll see if it records a movie. And uh, here I am back again. And so that's now, uh, you probably saw things on the screen. I've not seen it. I wonder what happened when I was not here, if you see what I mean. Let's click on that. And yes, it's recorded a movie. And uh, we could play that film here, but I think I'll uh, download it. It's having a little think over there for some reason. There we are. Let's download that film to this uh, computer and save from there. And uh, there we are. There it is down the corner. And if we just play that film, hopefully, we'll see what just happened. Oh, it's me, look going to the fridge and being uh, detected by the camera and it's taking a recording. Oh, look, I looked at some carrots and things. Did I want the carrots and things? No, I decided to take the all brand cereal, which was clearly much more exciting. There we are. So uh, not brilliant quality video clearly here, but perfectly serviceable. If you wanted to keep track of your fridge, you could clearly do it using a Raspberry Pi Zero. So there we are. We've taken a Raspberry Pi Zero W, added a camera, and turned it into a network accessible surveillance device. In my next Raspberry Pi Zero Projects video, I'm going to be taking this, the uh, headphone amplifier for the Pi from Pi Moroni, and adding it to a Raspberry Pi Zero to turn it into a media player with its own screen and control buttons. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.